Okay, so hi from Iowa Ridge. Thanks for staying till the um, till the end. Um, we are a high mountain site in Colorado, just west of Boulder. Um, I'm Katie Sudi, and I lead NIWAT. Um, so news from here: we just had our cyber view last summer. So thanks for all who participated, um, and it was really fun, super helpful. Um, so great all around. Um, at that Katie, time, we also can I interrupt for one sec? Right now you're in presenter view. You might want to go to slideshow mode instead. Oh, sorry. Here. Yeah, that's okay. Is this better? Sorry. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, Perfect. Okay. Um, so then we also um, transitioned to co a co-lead structure. So Nancy Emery um, started co-leading um, with me. And we also transitioned each of our four hypotheses to um, being co-led um, with the eye of mentoring junior faculty um, to, to transitioning over the next couple cycles. So we welcome um, E. Pinkley, um, Will Weeder, um, and Marcos Beso Jivik um, to our leadership team. Eve is here at this meeting somewhere. Um, Nancy sends her regrets. She was planning to give this talk actually, but had an emergency. So the other bit of news is that we just um, reached peak snowpack at our site. It's about 120% um, of average. So here's a picture um, on Monday from the Green Lakes Valley. So spring has not sprung, um, but snow melt is starting. Um, also, I just want to start with um, kind of, as you can see from these um, photos, about um, kind of along the same lines about um, heterogeneity that we've um, heard a lot um, this, um, this, this today. Um, so um, at NIWAC, um, redistribution of um, snow by wind along this very complex transit um, tr train um, causes the strong heterogeneity. And our overarching um, hypotheses are, are um, aimed at understanding how environmental change translates to ecological response um, across this heterogeneity. And to do this, we're um, linking um, um, environmental or evolutionary biology to population and community ecology, and then integrating across. Um, at the catchment scale. And today I want to talk um, specifically about our efforts in applying evolutionary theory to these questions. We can start with a very general expectation um, that species responses to environmental variation reflect different strategies that they have evolved through natural selection in response to historic conditions, the ghost of climate past. Um, Jen was talking about this that just um, previously. Um, and we can think about that in terms of a driver, for instance, at our site, we're concentrating a lot on this phenomenon that we call extended summer, where we're seeing in our long-term data, longer, warmer, drier, snow-free seasons being more frequent at our site. And when we think about this and how species might respond to this across a heterogeneous um, landscape, we can think about how um, they might um, have a strategy um, that is generally um, thought about it as adaptive tracking of those climate conditions. And we can break across our, la our, um, our landscape into different areas that might have different limitations and different ways that we'd expect the species to track. So for some, so for some areas, for instance, might be um, soil moisture limited versus others energy limited and those will affect the traits and the tolerances that are needed in order to um, respond to these environmental changes. Um, evolutionary theory, though, also suggests two other mechanisms um, important in species response, um, plasticity and bet hedging. Um, so plasticity being a strategy um, where um, able to adjust and variability over time. So really take advantage of a good year and optimizing those responses. And bet hedging is the idea about sacrificing short-term fitness in order to get um, through um, um, undesirable periods. So um, playing it safe or not putting all eggs in one basket. And so extending to these other mechanisms pushes us um, to think about some different environmental axes um, in particular, environmental predictability and environmental variability. And evolutionary theory has, has 
on this quite well, and so we're drawing from that theory, thinking about um, adaptive tracking as being um, perhaps the strategy that's most um, important in environments that are very predictable, not very variable, and bet hedging, on the other hand, being an important strategy and really highly, um, highly um, um, variable, but also highly um, stochastic environments. In order to start thinking about our um, heterogeneous landscape this way, um, we're using um, a sensor node array that we have established in a, um, in a saddle catchment, is what we call it. So it's a 45 hectare um, catchment. There's 16 um, sensor nodes where we're measuring um, all sorts of um, environmental um, characteristics and resource um, variability. And we can use this really precise information to look at what in a different, in a particular location, there um, is experiencing both the variability as well as the predictability. And so here I'm showing you an example um, with um, soil moisture um, content. I don't want to get into too much of the metrics that we're using to describe variability and predictability, but I'm super happy to discuss how we made those choices if people want to. But we can describe how variable uh, um, a species might see the environment at a given location, as well as how predictable it is. So whether a cue early on kind of predicts what a species might see later on in the growing season. And we can then array our landscape across these, um, these um, axes of predictability and invariability variability and actually test these expectations about species response and species um, strategies across this landscape. And we're doing this um, in the, using three different ways. First of all, um, we've been taking um, interannual species surveys at sensor node arrays. Um, so trying to really connect the um, fine scale um, environmental variation to species response. Doing reciprocal transplant experiments both um, of established individuals as well as using seeds, and then also environment, manipulating the environment, so changing the predictability and variability of the environment. That's all. Um, and I guess I want to just end by, since I'm the last one, um, saying thank you to everyone, but also to thank you very much to the LTR Network Office. Um, this has been a really um, great um, last um, three days of talks. Thank you, Katie.